Hello, this is Ed from Ed Fred Ned, and you are listening to Guildcast. Guildcast is a weekly podcast series based on the three pillars of the Graphic Artists Guild advocacy, community, and business resources. Keep listening to learn more about the Graphic Artists Guild and visit our website at www.graphicartistsguild.org. I don't have a ton of different things. I kind of use the same things over and over, but I do like quality things. And I, I tend to save up money to buy the thing I want that will hopefully last for years as opposed to buying 50,000 different things. <laughs> Guildcast is brought to you in part by Graphic Arts Today. This bonus episode comes from the South. It came from the South with Tammy, Chrissy, Terrence, and Camille. So I was thinking about how it started and I was saying, so the, this episode is about grits. Uh, through the discussions of diversity and inclusion, we decided to simmer things down a bit and talk about the differences and similarities through the one thing the South is known for. Food. Okay, it's not just the one thing, but you know, Southern cooking is a big thing in America. Um, we started by describing what spice or what flavor we would bring to this creative gumbo, and now we're delving in deep dish to our perspectives and experiences around simplistic ingredients. Um, so we decided to start with the Southern classic grits. Grits as in a basic staple or a canvas in which other layers of creativity are mixed in or layered on top of. Uh, grits to me can be the same as approaching a canvas, like which substrate, uh, how do I want it primed? Um, do I want to amp up the flavors? Do I want to add bacon? So those are all the things I think about when I'm approaching creativity across the board, especially when it's a canvas or a blank um, palette. Um, so with that, I believe that grits can be the first step to approaching creativity. So like, how is your document set up? How many layers do you add before adding another ingredient? Like, how do you plan for the end result? And so for the first question I wanted to ask everybody, when I say grits, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Daniela, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy. Uh, so I did not grow up eating grits. So for me, grit was like, I first think of like the term grit, like the, the texture. Um, and so somebody, you know, who had never tasted it before, I was very hesitant to try grits because I was like, well, the word doesn't sound all that great. Uh, so I don't know what the food's going to taste like, but it, it's a lot like polenta, which is something that I'm used to. Um, so I was like, oh, this is a familiar taste. I'm used to it. Um, but in terms of that idea of layering things on, um, I know that less is sometimes more because I have the problem if I go to a froyo place, I'm like the gummy bears and the mar marshmallows and the hot fudge and the caramel. And you're like, oh, I can't taste anything now. You know, like, <laughs> uh, so I've learned that less can sometimes be more and the smaller the thing can be more impactful if it's just large. Gotcha. So I have two questions from that. So you grew up eating polenta? Uh, kind of. It wasn't a staple in the house. We ate more rice, like chicken and rice was more of our thing. Polenta was like sometimes, um, but I was familiar with it. It was more if we went over to like our Spanish friends' households, we would eat it a lot there. Gotcha. You say yeah. polenta so much better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> And then also with the froyo. So, how do you determine that base flavor? It's really hard. I struggle, and every time I'm like, oh, I should have done the other one. You know, like I'm never satisfied with what I've done. But then I remind myself that I can go back another time and try something else. Uh, but I need to be adventurous enough to allow myself to try something new versus sticking with the familiar, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, that does make sense. Oh, do you feel like your ice cream selection carries over into your creative decision-making process at all? Yeah, I find myself going for the same fonts over and over and over again. I'm like, Chrissy, just try another one. Like, it's not going to hurt. You can always change it. You don't have to use Railway fighting? every single time. <laughs> Are we recording no, we're, this? this we're so not recording all. Yeah. We just spitball. Yeah, we're recording. <laughs> yeah, we're recording. How my ice cream How my ice cream choices influence my creative life? You'd be surprised, no, because like all of this is like the creative de decision making exactly. process, exactly. Um, yeah. and all of those can bring anxiety. You can <laughs> literally, like, I don't know what's later. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know what? That's funny because that's one of the reasons that I feel like I couldn't be um like a full out graphic designer or a full out producer because for me it's like how do you choose from all 
the things. Like, give me a template. Yeah, maybe I might like move that around. Yeah, yeah. But from scratch, I'm like, where do you even start? Like, how do you even decide? I'm gonna start with this specific thing. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think that's not for everything, but just for certain things, I guess. I actually think it's for a lot of things. Like uh, bringing it back to food, it's the same thing. Like for me, oh, yeah. trying to decide what ingredients to include. I really need to know that before I start making the grits because for me, I want them to be like this basic, clean palette that can kind of like sit in the background while all these yeah. things are piled on top of it. So yeah. it's kind of like thinking about the creative process before you even begin to figure out exactly what the base elements yeah. should be. Sure. <laughs> it's all overwhelming to me. <laughs> Tammy, for you, what comes to mind? Um. I was raised having grits. Um, I am incredibly picky about the type of grits that I use because not all grits taste the same. I don't buy my grits from the grocery store. <laughs> I don't. Um, I buy them from a, a local grower here. And um, the place I used to get them was called Cane Water Grits. And now I get them from... Uh, oh, Marsh Hen, I think it's called. I forget. They changed their name because um, uh, with everything happening with uh, Black Lives Matter and everything, their name used to be Geechee, and they changed oh, yeah. it. And so it's now, I think it's Marsh Hen. Um, but I love their grits. They do fantastic grits. There's a specific way that I make them. I have to have cream, and there's a specific way. And I am a purist. Like, I like basic grits with butter and salt. And then we live here on the coast of um, Georgia. So fresh wild shrimp is always available. So usually do shrimp and grits and people will, people have said in the past, like you don't do like onions and peppers. And I don't like that. I like the grits and the shrimp and I like to taste those flavors together. So I'm I uh, I don't know, maybe I'm boring. I like plain things. <laughs> You're a grit aficionado. I mean, like you. I just never... am, It's just they have to be done a certain way, and they have to be creamy. And like people are like, "Well, would you ever put cheese in your grits?" Yeah, if it's the right kind of cheese. But you know, after you've had them for years and you've gone through watery, gross grits, and smell, <laughs> like you know how you like your grits, and so right. It's like them a certain way. <laughs> so tell me about because I. I think I've only had store bar grits. Like, oh really? Yeah, I know. I know. Terrence, I'll send I'm you learning. <laughs> so, what what is the major difference? Um, they're thicker. The quality's better. They're fresher. They have to stay in the refrigerator. And so, um, I gotta find that company. But yeah, the, I, there's a quality taste difference. I don't know what it is. They're gritty, but they don't taste gritty. If that makes sense, like grits should not be like your like Chrissy said, chewing on gritty sand it shouldn't be that way they should be soft and there should be like a i don't know there's a texture to it so for me um i just am really picky about the type of grit and i'm lucky enough to have access to the grits that i like otherwise i'd have to order them so when we see you tammy it's great marsh right? hen mill that's what it's oh, called I'm check it out marsh hen mill and uh, they recently changed their name, uh, which I was very, it used to be Geechee Boy and they changed it and now it's Marsh Hen. And so um, they also come out with, this is actually kind of fun, uh, once a year around Mother's Day, they come out with pink grits and they call them unicorn grits because it's just the way that the corn turns that color of pink. And so that's a pretty cool thing. I've made um, cornbread. I've made cake with it. There's all kinds of things. And then they do cornmeal flour and all kinds of stuff. So I like the quality of the their their grits. So. Well, oh, I just I just learned a bunch. Um, and let's let's bring that to creativity also. So, what ingredients in your creative illustration do you not skimp on? That could be from like inks to paper. Um time oh, if I, like I have that. to draw something five or six times I will because I want to get it because I do a lot of ink on paper so if I draw something and it's not right I'll do it again and that's something I had to learn to accept about myself I have been using the iPad a lot more using po procreate which allows you to make mistakes so that's a different world for me that I get to make mistakes and erase 
um, because I used to like it was ink on paper. And so we've talked before about how I feel like I'm cheating a little bit when I use the iPad because you can um, erase things, but I'm learning to accept it. I still love paper the most. I like I like drawing, like if I have to draw a strawberry or something, I like drawing it over and over again. I like the organic feel of the pen on the paper. Um, I am getting used to the iPad for that. So, um, and then the inks, I buy a lot of different types of pens because I just like to have the choices and try different things out. But um, I do have one type of paper, which is Strathmore. I use that same that you get from the art store. But um, I don't have a ton of different things. I kind of use the same things over and over, but I do like quality things. And I, I tend to save up money to buy the thing I want that will hopefully last for years as opposed to buying 50,000 different things, <laughs> which we've all been through that before, especially yeah. when we're trying new things. But like just a perfect example, last night um, I had texted Chrissy about something and I just got a bunch of Procreate brushes because I really want to learn how to do more lettering uh, on Procreate. And so it was kind of cool. It took like two hours though, because there were so many things like the brush sets and then there's these little grids you can use, but it's, it's like a whole new world, like opening up Procreate now and looking at those brushes that I have choices. Whereas before I didn't really, but yeah. It, and I am uh, really bad about ordering the same thing at every single restaurant. <laughs> Cause it's like, oh, I'm here. I can get my favorite thing, but then I don't try anything else and that's not good either. So working on for it. me i'm always like how do i know that my favorite thing is actually my favorite thing you have a bad that very valid point i agree yeah, yeah. and I have, I have a follow-up question for you but i want to make sure camille has an opportunity to okay. talk about her experience with grits you know that's gonna be pretty quick though um you know, <laughs> yeah i'm gonna tell you like i'm, I'm more listening to you guys because like i am not a fan of grits yeah. i've never been a fan of grits i, I it's, it kind of lands in the same category as porridge for me like i don't like yeah. any kind of porridge like i think it was because when i was younger they forced me to eat porridge and i didn't like it yeah <laughs> No, I don't. I don't eat anything with that consistency. If it looks like it, I'm good. <laughs> so when I came to, and it's not a big thing in Jamaica either. So when I yeah. came to Florida was when I got exposed mostly to grits, and I was like, what? I? <laughs> and there's no good people. grits in Florida. I will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> there what? What you said? I said there's not good grits in Florida. I was <laughs> born and raised in Florida. They don't know how to do grits in Florida. Exactly, because when you're talking about growing it, I'm like growing it. Like yeah. all I know, I've, I've seen grits in a box, and that's about. <laughs> It's corn. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have no kind of like super information with, with grits itself. But I like the concepts of, I do understand the concepts of it. And I like it where it's like a blank canvas, like you guys said, where you can pretty much, you know, impose your own direction onto the, the canvas of the grits. Um, but no, I'm not a huge fan. I've seen people do it and it looks like it tastes good, but I'm not, I'm not good. <laughs> Okay. But I can still contribute, but I won't be as verbal as everybody else. So why did you say you hated them so much? Porridge. The oh, porridge. Yeah, the porridge. Yeah, they have the same, it has right. the same consistency as porridge, and the ones I've had, they also have that gritty. The one I tried was gritty. I was like, ah, this smells good. <laughs> have you had a, a really, like, thick, creamy, amazing, well, I guess not. Porridge? I'm, 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 you know what? Tried, I will make you grits the right yeah. way. That's, I was just about to say, I feel like I should... I, I'm, I'm it not, should stick on your spoon when you turn it upside down. <laughs> Definitely not. Mine has been like... <laughs> <literally>. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna need the um the the the, the special delivery from you. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm looking forward to that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I told a little side tangent. Uh, but I, it's been thinking, it's stuck in the back of my head where polenta in Spanish also means like strength or like oh. that polenta is like, it gives you strength and it gives you like a termination almost. And grit also is used as like grit. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's really interesting that both of them are associated with a sense of power and like empowerment. It's like, I'm reading way too far into it, but it's, the, no. you know, this idea of like little tiny no. grains of... Uh, corn give you strength in some way, shape, or form. Well, also, think about the fact it's a very, I mean, think about why people ate grits. And like what Camille said, it's actually on point. It is like porridge. It was cheap. So you could have lots of meals from the grits 
grits can last you a really long time. I mean, it's like rice, you know, when you make a little bit of rice, it goes a long way. And the same thing with grits. And, you know, they, they didn't have instant grits, right? Like we have now back in the day. So the grits were thicker. They lasted longer. You needed less because it is such a dense thing. I mean, you, I mean, if you can get through a cup of grits, I salute you. I can't get through a cup because it, it's, <laughs> but it does fill you up you know, and especially like a cold morning or whatever. And I don't eat grits for breakfast as much. I eat them with dinner or lunch with a uh, meat, but a lot of people eat them for breakfast in the South. Yeah. And that's the only way I know it. I didn't even know it was, a, I thought it was mainly a breakfast thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't know that it was dinner thing until I worked at a restaurant and they made our grits and griots, which is yes. just amazing. I love that's so good. good. Yeah. Guildcast is a weekly podcast series based on the three pillars of the Graphic Artists Guild, advocacy, community, and business resources. Keep listening to learn more about the Graphic Artists Guild and visit our website at www.graphicartistsguild.org. Yeah, so what's your journey with grits, Terrence? Me? Well, I didn't... I... I mean, I was given grits, but I um, I didn't really love them. It was it was a good thing that I could eat on the side. It wasn't until I got older and started realizing the infinite potential that I started getting into them. Uh, it was primarily a breakfast food for me for a long time. And like right now, like there's a very specific recipe that I make that I really like. It is cheese grits um, with like bacon and caramelized onions on top, which is Ooh, excellent. But it is not going to be as good as it's going to be when I uh, get Tammy's grits because yeah, I've got to try that. It's Man. good. Yeah. yeah. And it, Gouda and I, is a really good cheese because it's yeah. so thick. So you can put the Gouda in there and it just... Smoke Gouda. A oh. whole other level. Yeah. You can't, yeah. It's like What's bacon. The, like you can't go wrong with smoked Gouda and anything. No, yeah. you can't. Yeah. And I like uh, doing a little bit of what is this? Truffle oil every once in a while? Oh, uh-huh. truffle oil is very good. Yeah, and I love the fact that it is something, I think when we were talking about it, it did occur to me that, you know, grits in the South might be prevalent because the South is primarily poor. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, and yeah. it is a meal that can get you through the day if right. need be. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Diners, so I remember as a kid when we would go on vacations and we would go to like the little diners, they would always have the grits on the plate. And I was like, ugh. Like, right? <laughs> So that's what I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you, what do you do if somebody puts like a a plate of runny grits in front of you? I am from the South. You smile and you take four bites and then you move on about your day. Because (laughs) as I was raised, nothing is that bad unless it's something that I won't eat. Like I am a weirdo and I don't eat normal meats. Like I'll eat most seafood. I have no problem with. I have a hamburger every once in a while. I don't eat a lot of red meat. I like chicken. Um, mostly chicken and fish. Um, and of course, I love bacon and pulled pork. But I don't eat venison. I don't eat rabbit. I don't eat duck. I don't eat any weird things like sheep, whatever. I just, I, I'm, I was a vegetarian for like seven years. It took a long time for me to get here. And so <laughs> um, I don't eat a lot of, um, I mean, I do have meat with dinner and everything. And I like a turkey sandwich and all that kind of jazz. But like, I just, I have weird things and so like venison is huge here i just don't i can't do it i there are just some meats bison is another one that's growing um everyone's like oh look at oh, lean. i'm like yeah great all i can see is dances with wolves and tatanka <laughs> like when he does the tatanka that's thing that's all i see and then i can't eat it so i have weird like meat things that are just my own Make no sense. You know, no all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you feel less crazy. I don't. This is, I don't okay, good. Really off topic. You. But all right, so this, this has been happening, to, happening to me recently. I don't know if it had to do with having Kelly, like, because it, it wasn't always like this, right? So I have, I've noticed recently where if I, if I'm making chicken and you know you have to clean it and all of that. <laughs> the other day I made chicken and I sat down to eat it and all I could do was imagine the skin and everything I was taking off while it was raw and I, could I eat the chicken? No, it sat there all night. Like, I was just looking at it like, you can't, you cannot, you need to fix your mind and just eat the chicken, you're hungry. I know. <laughs> so I was like, no, all I could think about was the, 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 the skin and everything before while I was eating, so I was like, yeah, no, and it's making me almost vegan. So that's really weird, but anyways. Yeah. It <laughs> happened. It, it happened to me for like seven years, but then I, I kind of got past it. I, I love like turkey dinners for Thanksgiving, I love, but I 
dread the part where you have to clean the turkey and put it all on the yeah it's like that part I dread but I get over it and I move on but yes so if back to your question um if they're bad grits I just smile and say thank you and eat them and then move on because at the end of the day I feel like in life anyone can swallow down four bites of something as long as it's not offensive to their belief system (laughs) so I just smile four bites is a lot (laughs) well how big they had to be i'm just saying so it's like you move know, it around like when you were a kid you know you roll food on the plate you do the same I thing and then no one's offended you're just not that hungry just not that hungry mm. so i have as a grown uh, adult tried to hide food while overseas because <laughs> we were in japan and in japan you have to eat everything and it's very offensive yeah. not to eat everything but yeah. i was having severe intestinal issues at the time and i was like i cannot put another thing that i don't know what it is in my mouth right now <laughs> so you take like, a plate and put it on your husband no i was literally like poor no. sam he got half of it i was hiding it under the decorations that were on the plate and like the waiter came by and would like point at the food that i hadn't eaten yet and i was like oh thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> shoving it under every corner <laughs> it's like i was like i'm a child right now i'm gonna be a little child i just i can't i can't handle this i went to an italian wedding once and i did not know that there were four courses of like full meals oh. so like the first course came it was salad i ate my salad it was small so that was good then the next course comes and it's like pasta and it was amazing so i ate all that and i was like oh this is such a good meal and then the next thing comes and it's like a plate of meat and i'm just like uh this is it stopping then the next thing comes and it's more pop i mean it just never ended and my uncle who is from new york in italian he's like he's like yeah he's like why didn't you say something to me before <laughs> i was like i don't know I didn't so it's like here i am by the fourth plate because that was an expensive wedding. You know what I mean? I'm like opening my mouth, like, Oh my God. Like I can't, there was nothing. There was no room left for me, but yeah, it was delicious. It was amazing. Daniela, yeah. do, you, do you have any experience with this? I do. I'm actually, I, it's so funny. You guys are talking about grits and I just keep thinking of my cousin, Vinny. I don't know if you guys saw that movie or not. Yeah, you know, I do quotes from that all the time. <laughs> Thing, you know the magic grits you know? but um, i i actually have had grits before a few years ago when i was in south carolina i had oh there you go um so i i do know you know very well what you're talking about and you know i'm italian so of course polenta um you know yeah. italians make polenta all the time and I, i'm hysterical over your wedding story because <laughs> that's like a typical <laughs> sunday meal is like you know, Whoa. i'll tell you i got it here's the thing Italian food is one of my favorite. I love Italian food. I could eat it all day. And it's one of those things where you're like, I should have not eaten lunch because everything was so freaking good. That was the worst part. It's like, could you just wrap that up for me? Like, <laughs> I have noticed that there's a, there's a very big difference in culture in terms of time of consumption. Yes. So, like, Italians, it is an event. Like, it takes. Right, right. Hours, and so by the time the fourth meal comes out, you're hungry again because it's been like 15 yeah. hours that you've yeah. been hanging out with these people. Well, it's just here, like you gobble yeah. things up so quickly that your stomach's like, "What have you done to me?" You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and it's typical, you know, an Italian Sunday. It's typical to only meet eat like one meal a day. You have a little something in the morning. Um, but then, you know, Italian Sunday, it's like, you know, lunch and dinner is just all one afternoon long affair. Yeah. Uh, you know? <laughs> but, and uh, like, we just, and we feed people. That's just what we do. People yell at me all the time when they come to my house. They're like, would you stop asking me if I want something to eat or drink? <laughs> I'm like, I can't help it. I'm Italian. I need, I feel like I need to feed you. <laughs> yeah. But that's, you know what? Cool. There's a correlation with the South because we do yeah. the same thing. When I was just about to say. Yep. And it's funny that you say this because I have a great story. One, so my uncle is Italian, his mother Italian, like their whole side of the family. Then my aunt was from Florida, right? And so then they married and we used to go there for Thanksgiving every year when I was a kid. Well, his mom, Mrs. Florio, she one year my dad is from west virginia then we lived in florida and then we've got new york to florida and so we go over there for thanksgiving and mrs florio came she didn't make turkey 
she made it she made pasta and antipasta all the whole the whole thing and my dad walks in the house and he's like it smells delicious but i don't smell a turkey and she's like jim we're not having turkey and he's like what like <laughs> my dad all the way home all we heard about how we didn't have a freaking turkey and it's like the food was amazing like there was so much food and i'm just like how can you complain he's like it's thanksgiving you should have a turkey <laughs> and that, like to the day that woman died she teased my husband my father about it for like his whole life and it was just like come to my house jim this year for thanksgiving no turkey <laughs> so, so. I know this is going to seem like a very dumb question. Uh, do Italian people not celebrate Thanksgiving in the same way American people do, or? Is that for me? I don't know. I'm, not, I'm well, just throwing no, out there. We always, <laughs> we, always did, we always did. Now, my, my father, you know, was from Italy. I'm a first generation here in the States. So my okay. father and his whole family, they came over. My father was the youngest of 15 when they came over. Um, but we always had, uh, my mother, you know, was American. She's American. Um, but we always, uh, in, you know, we always had turkey on Thanksgiving. Um, you know, so I don't... I, I think we just had a traditional meal that year. That's what I think it was. I don't... I think they had turkey other years. I think it was just because that year. Uh, Thanksgiving is just an American holiday. Is that right? right. Like, there's, yeah. there's yeah. similar events that happen, like... Yeah. I want to say there's one similar in Argentina, but I, I could be misunderstanding my childhood. But, um, like, we... <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Oh, how much time do we got? There's a lot of misunderstanding that happened in my childhood. <laughs> Certain Disney movies, I'm like, what? <laughs> Bambi's mom died? Like, I thought she just left. <laughs> well, well... <laughs> I think also for us, like there were certain things that we would try to emulate in order to like fully embrace the fact that we're here. I'm Argentine, not, but I come from Spanish and Italian backgrounds. Um, and all of our family friends were Argentine as well, or Spaniards, Cuban, Colombian, we had everybody. Um, and I think everyone added their own little twist to things or like we allowed ourselves to be a little bit more exploratory with Thanksgiving dinners. Cause it wasn't like our grandparents recipe. It was, Oh, Hey, I found this recipe for my neighbor. Let's try it. So like we would have turducken, like our family friend would do turducken. There would oh, suddenly be like baisha at you know Thanksgiving and like things that you wouldn't expect at traditional Thanksgiving dinners. But it was like foods that we found comforting, and then there would be a turkey of some sort thrown yeah. into the mix. Gotcha. Oh, I also wanted to throw the same question to you that I asked Tammy about um, your initial canvas before you start illustrating. Like, like, what tools do you like to use? What do you not skimp on? Do you have a ritual associated with it? Are you asking me or Daniela? Chrissy, you. Me? Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no, you're fine. I think it depends on what I'm drawing or like what I'm doing. If it's a client project, I always start with pen and paper. I am very picky about my pens. I always do uh, Pilots 7 um, or 5 if I'm writing in my journal, but the 7 just feels right. And then I've got note paper that I've printed out. Um, that just gives a space for me to write down the client, the meeting, or like the project I'm working on and the date. And I just track these in red folders. So for me, it's like the organizational aspect of it is where I find my ritual. Um, and then I'll start drawing here. And then depending on what type of project it is, I'll either use like an app to vectorize it or I'll take a picture and start vectorizing it in the computer and working from there. Because I primarily do like vector illustration versus more traditional illustration. Um, but I did recently get a tablet um, and I bought it. This is the first time I spent way too much on something. It was like 20 bucks. But I was like, oh my gosh, it's not $5. But I got a uh, surface cover that feels like paper. And so oh, it that gives too. that feeling of writing it on paper in a stylus. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. And the stylus is actually made out of wood. It's, um, oh, I'm terrible with names. Like this Strag, Stragster brand. They like do proper art supplies. Oh, yeah. but they start yeah. making styluses and it, it, it's made out of wood. And so it really feels like you're drawing with a pencil and paper That's on awesome. your tablet, but you have all the benefits of it being uh, digital and you can erase and stuff like that. Um, but the limitlessness of it is a little bit daunting, which is probably why I still stick with pen and paper when I do my own stuff. Cause it forces me to think of the concept versus like, 
all right, which pen am I going to use and which opacity and all that stuff. Like, it's true. Your boundaries in place that. and that I work within those boundaries. I get that. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I don't I do well that. with blank canvases. Blank canvases and I freak out. <laughs> Really? Isn't that like one of the hardest? I found that one of the most daunting I parts agree. of being a creative period. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Like a blank, like if you were going to paint something like a blank canvas? I need mm -hmm. some sort of restriction. So I, like if you're like, draw something, I will ask you, name me an object and an adjective okay. and a location. Okay. And then that way I've got something to start with. Because if yeah. you're like, draw something, I'm going to draw a happy face. Like default yeah. is going to be a happy face <laughs> yeah and that you know people are like are you not showcasing your art skills it's like yeah i don't know what to do and so i need it's funny with paint i can just get like i'm not a i am not a painter let's first say that i enjoy painting things but like with paint I have no qualms about just putting paint on something like and getting going and if i don't like it i can change it and i i don't know how to paint i do it for fun like if i paint furniture or i paint a wall or whatever i'm painting but the it's i feel the same way about you the same way you do chrissy about the paper is like what am i going to draw what am i going to draw and sometimes i have to ask people or i'll just pick a subject and then start researching and googling and i like to look at old illustrations a lot and i that's why i'm obsessed with buying old nature books that have really cool line illustrations because I use those a lot for inspiration to draw things. And I do, I get all kinds of nature books with line drawings in them. And so, but yeah, I, I do the same thing. It's, it takes me a while sometimes to figure out what I want to draw. Coming up on this episode of Guildcast. Because I approach when I'm painting, I love the blank canvas, you know, like I love starting anything with a blank canvas because I'm like, I just, I just start putting layers of stuff down and take away when I, when I need, but I do my graph work the same way. I'll start with whatever size needs to be my finished size and just start layering things. Join the Graphic Artists Guild to listen to the full version of this episode at www.graphicartistsguild.org. Thanks for listening to Guildcast. Coming up in next week's episode. And that company had taken her illustrations and sent them off to, uh, had outsourced them to um, artisans overseas who made Wow. cute little, I think it was Christmas ornaments based on her illustrations, which they were happily selling. And the company was selling these ornaments to, uh, the company does B2B, it does not sell to the general public. So the company was selling these ornaments to places like West Elm and um, wow. Urban Outfitters and all these, you know, major retailers. And she was just, you know, gobsmacked that her work was infringed in this way. Guildcast is a weekly podcast series based on the three pillars of the Graphic Artists Guild, advocacy, community, and business resources. Keep listening to learn more about the Graphic Artists Guild and visit our website at www.graphicartistsguild.org.